more scary stories to tell in the dark. Collected folklore retold by Alvin Schwartz. Illustrated by Stephen Gamel. A ghost in the mirror. This is a scary game that young people sometimes play, trying to conjure up a ghost in their bathroom mirror. Many don't really believe that a ghost is going to appear, but they try to raise one anyway, for the fun and the excitement. Some are willing to settle for any ghost, but others have a particular ghost in mind. One of these is a ghost named Mary Worth, who is also known as Mary Jane, and Bloody Mary. She is the heroine of an old comic strip, but some say she actually was a witch who was hanged at the infamous witch trials in Salem, Massachusetts in 1962. Another of these ghosts is La Llorona, the weeping woman who wanders the streets of cities and towns from Texas to California and throughout Mexico looking for her lost child. Still, another is Mary Wales, a young woman who is supposed to have been killed in a car accident in Indianapolis, Indiana in 1965. Her ghost is one of the vanishing hitchhikers. It is said that again and again she thumbs a ride home in a passing car, then vanishes before she gets there. Here is how ghost hunters try to raise a ghost. 1. They find a quiet bathroom, close the door, and turn off the lights. And 2. While they stare at their face in the mirror, they repeat the ghost's name, usually 47 times, or 100. If any ghost will do, they say, any ghost in place of a name. If they do manage to raise one, its face will slowly replace their face in the mirror. Some say a ghost is likely to be angry at being disturbed. If it gets angry enough, they say, it will try to shatter the mirror and come right into the room. But a player can always turn on the lights and send the ghost back to where it came from. And when that happens, the game is over. The Curse My dad's friend, Charlie Potter, was a small, nervous man who was always looking around, as if he was in some kind of danger. After he told me this story about his college fraternity, I understood why. The frat doesn't exist anymore, he said. It was banned years ago. We had just nine members at the point, and were taking in two more, Jack Lawton and Ernie Kramer. One night in January, just about this time of year, the nine of us took them out into the country for their initiation. We took them to an old deserted house where two young men about our age had been murdered, only recently. Their murderer was still at large. We gave Jack a lit candle and told him to go up to the third floor. Stay there for an hour, we told him, then come back down. Don't speak. Don't make any noise. If your candle goes out, carry on in the dark. From where we were standing, we could see that light from Jack's candle moving up the stairs to the second floor, then to the third. But when he got to the third floor, his candle went out. We guessed that he had come to a drafty corner, and the wind blew it out. But when the hour went by, and he didn't come down, we weren't so sure. We waited another 15 minutes, and got more and more nervous. So we sent Ernie Kramer up after him. When Ernie got to the third floor, his candle also went out. We waited 10 minutes, 20 minutes. But there was no sign of either of them. Come on down, we called, but no answer. Finally, we decided to go and get them. Armed with flashlights, we started up the stairs. It was as quiet and as dark as a grave in that house. When we got to the second floor, we called out again, but there was no answer. When we got to the third floor, we walked into a great big open space like an attic. Jack and Ernie weren't there. 
but we saw some footprints in the dust. These led to a room on the other side of the attic. That room was also empty, but there was fresh blood on the floor, and the window was wide open. It was about 25 feet to the ground, but there was no ladder or rope in sight that they could have used to get down. We searched the rest of the house, and the land around the house, and yet, we found nothing. We decided that they were playing a trick on us. We figured that in some way they had escaped through the window, and were hiding in the woods. The blood on the floor was to throw us off track. We guessed that they'd show up the next day, with a lot of stories and a lot of laughs. But they didn't. The next day, we told the Dean of Men what had happened, and he reported it to the police. The police couldn't find anything either, and after several weeks, the search had ended. To this day, no one knows what happened to Jack Lawton or Ernie Kramer. There isn't much more to tell, he said. We weren't arrested, but the college disbanded the fraternity and suspended the nine of us from our school for that year. The strangest part came after we graduated. Someone must have placed a curse on us. Every year since then, around the time of that initiation, one of us has died or gone crazy. I'm the only one left, he said, and I'm in pretty good health, but there are times when I feel just a little peculiar. The church. There was a fellow named Larry Berger, who wasn't afraid of anybody alive, but anybody who was dead scared the wits out of him. One night, Larry was out driving in the country in his old jeep, when he got caught in a bad thunderstorm. The rain was coming down in the sheets. Since his jeep didn't have a top to it, Larry started looking for a place to take shelter. But at the first place he came to, he didn't even slow down. It was an old deserted cabin, probably as dry as bone inside. But Larry knew for a fact that it was haunted, and he wasn't going to stay there. A few miles further, he came to an old abandoned church, standing all alone in a field. It hadn't been used in years. All the window glass was gone, but it still had sections of the roof intact. So Larry parked his jeep and ran inside. It was as dark as it could be in there. Larry groped around until he found a pew and sat down. It was nice and dry, just as he thought it'd be, and he stretched out his legs and made himself comfortable. Suddenly, there was a big flash of lightning, and Larry saw that he wasn't the only one in that church. There were people sitting in almost every pew. They all had their heads bowed as if they were praying, and they were all dressed in white. These must be the ghosts sitting in their shrouds, Larry thought. They must have come in from some graveyard to get dry. Larry jumped up and ran down the aisle as fast as he could, right smack into one of the ghosts. He stared at it for a while, and then there was nothing. No one ever heard from Larry ever again. He had disappeared. The bad news. Leon and Todd loved baseball. When they were young, they had played on the town's baseball team. Leon had been the pitcher, and Todd had played second base. Now that they were a lot older, they spent their free time watching baseball games on TV and talking about the sport. Do you think they play baseball in heaven? Leon asked Todd one day. That's a good question, said Todd. Tell you what, the one who gets there first should let the other one know somehow. As it turned out, Todd had gotten to heaven first, and Leon waited patiently to hear from him. One day, Leon found Todd sitting in the living room, waiting for him. Leon was very excited to see him. What's it like up there? He asked. And what about baseball? When it comes to baseball, said Todd, I have some good news, and I have some bad news. The good news is that we do play baseball in heaven. We have some fine teams. I play second base on my team. 
Just like I used to in the old days. That's the good news. So then, what's the bad news? Asked Leon. The bad news, said Todd, is that you are scheduled to pitch tomorrow.